When the Argyle International Airport begins operations, the development of the tourism sector in Stubbs and surrounding areas will be an area for special attention, and persons interested in this particular area are being encouraged to get a head start. At the recent IADC Town Hall meeting in Stubbs, residents were given some insights into what they can do to tap into what can be a very lucrative tourism market. These insights came from the president of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Hotel and Tourism Association, Kim Halbish, who also looked at how persons involved in producing goods for tourism can add value to their products. The airport will bring a new caliber of visitor who will expect certain standards of service and will settle for nothing less. Gone are the days when we can tell them anything or give them anything because they would not know better. They come in today knowing more about our country than sometimes we do. This is how the media, the internet is affecting us. So whatever we do gets out in seconds. So the old way of business as usual will no longer work. We have to shape up or ship out. And believe me, somebody else will be out there waiting to step in our spots. There are many places tourists can choose to visit. Many of them offer much more for much less. So now we have to ensure that our product meets standards and requirements and that we meet the expectations of our visitor. In fact, we have to surpass those expectations. I mentioned before that we are a proud people. Here's our chance to showcase our pride in our homes and in our businesses. Well-maintained gardens, building painted, buildings painted in bright Caribbean colors is a tiny way to start. It is amazing what a fresh coat of paint and a welcoming tropical garden can do for the human spirit. We can do that for ourselves. The fact that it becomes an attraction is just an added bonus. Derelict vehicles, stray dogs, abandoned waste and construct of construction materials, unsightly, and we have to start to work at cleaning it up now. The practice of throwing everything by the roadside has got to stop. Little laws have to be enforced, and we have to play a part in keeping our country clean. <laughs> Armed with information, education, and open minds, we will be ready to embrace opportunities as they arise. Some areas of these opportunities are unique craft production. These products need to be of a high standard and should be durable and sized with the traveler in mind. So we can't build big, cumbersome souvenirs and want to know why the tourist is not buying it because they, it's obviously a problem to take them back being the weight restrictions and the amount of bags you allowed. So we have to think of those things. So if we're going into the souvenir market, small, compact, good quality, locally done. The craft ideas can be utilized in the shops in Kingstown, the cruise ship boat, and at our own airport shops, but they must have a high standard. Create small mu museums in your community. St. Vincent is blessed with red, rich, rich culture, and you may think a carnival museum. Showcase some of the costumes. Play some music that has, has been created over that year. It is an amazing, wonderful idea, and instead of throwing all this work away at the end of carnival, we preserve it for the whole year. It becomes a museum that is always changing, and that is, we could do that. It doesn't have to be large. Another idea is art museum. All our artists, there's nowhere we can go to see beautiful art that Vincentians do. We have some amazing craftsmen, we have some amazing sculptures, we have amazing artwork. To have a museum where these local artists can display their work and sell their work is another possibility. Our music is fantastic and we need to showcase it. Create people who play, the steel van is a perfect example. With, more, with the arrival of more tourism, there'll be more need for entertainment. <clears throat> Mini botanical gardens. Make your homes a showplace. 
Our spectacular flora and fauna is second to none. Make do floral arrangements. Those will be needed at the airport. Those will be used at all the hotels. So these are just some little ideas that I'm th throwing out so you can think about your. Another idea is internet cafes, small local restaurants, rum shops, mini groceries. Uh, rum shops could be the signature of St. Vincent's drive from the airport into the city. We should have brightly painted. I know in countries there's rum shop tours. Sometimes they guests even ask us for a tour of the rum shop. A game of dominoes is like totally amazing to them because we, be, we are so passionate and so loud that it, it, it's interesting for them. Um, create small cottage industries, local jams, jellies, sauces, candies like fudge, tamarind ball, ginger sticks, and sugar cakes. Once again, we have to make sure that they are of a proper standard and properly packaged. Add value. Long ago, we put two sugar cakes in a half pong bag and we tidy bag. Go get a, a denser bag, a sealer, a sticker. Instead of charging $2, we could charge 5 Add value to your products. Try to encourage persons to try our local dishes. So promote our breadfruit and our salt fish as much as you can, and you'll be surprised it becomes a visitor attraction. Once again, standards must be met, and all health safety guidelines must be closely followed. Plan to cater for all, as the airport staff and locals around will become your market. So we're not just catering for the tourists. Boutique or bed and breakfast accommodations. These types of accommodations will, return, will work for returning nationals, persons from the leeward side of the island and the Grenadines who may have to get in for early flight the next day, travelers looking for the true Vincentian experience may also opt for these types of accommodations. Places like plain fields, farms, rivers, and the Raraku Park would work perfectly to drive to develop our eco and sports tourism. Sports tourism is growing exponentially in St. Vincent. A lot of people travel for sport. Gospel tourism is, tra is, is growing as well. So we, these are some of the areas. Added to the many positions that will be filled by persons working directly at the airport, there are ancillary services, which may include equipment and vehicle main maintenance, uniform manufacturing, laundry services, cleaning companies, vehicle rentals, storage facilities, and the list can go on and on and on. Residents of Stubbs and the surrounding area should get themselves trained to qualify for the direct and indirect employment opportunities, which will result from the 24-hour operation of an international airport. We have to get a new work attitude. We're working night and day now. Remember, one mistake can make it all over the world in seconds. So we have to be ready and prepared. There are many entities available to you for information and for support. These include the Solid Waste Management Unit, the Ministry of Health, the Bureau of Standards, the Ministry of Tourism, the Tourism Authority, the Hotel and Tourism Association, the Taxi Driver Association, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. The Center for Enterprise Development will also guide you to strategically making good steps, good steps to follow in setting up your business. As the previous speaker said, nothing works without a really good foundation. So picture where you would like to be when the first plane lands on that airport and work hard towards getting there. We need to understand that tourism is the boy playing cricket on the cricket field. The farmers, the fishermen, the policemen, Tourism is a yacht captain, the taxi driver, the van driver, and the tour guides. Tourism is the mass band, the Calypsonians. Tourism is you. We all have to play a part in this dynamic and multifaceted industry. Tourism is everybody's business.
and we all have to work together to make it a success. Thank you. Residents attending the meeting also had the opportunity to make comments and ask questions. We are, we are giving our support maximum from the people of Stubbs and the inmate environment. Um, I think I'm a little concerned that, that part of the problem with our people, because we're a small rural community without much resources, and the whole idea of, of um, apartments and all of the developmental goals that we might have may not really fall within the grasp of our people because of the lack of finance. Capital is going to be a problem. And it's definitely going to require that a coming together of the people, uh, some forming some small cooperatives, some even in terms of the tourism drives and drive and so on, and government playing its part in terms of how we form partnership with the local people uh, as we move forward. So I, I just want to say that we are on board. We are on board with the project. Even if some of us had reservations for whatever reason, Dr. Matthias from Stubbs <laughs> removed all of that. And we all jumped behind him to give him our support. So I think um, the people Stubbs are with you. You just prioritize Stubbs. I'm just asking. <laughs> I have two questions and I didn't hear nothing mentioned about them tonight. Now I want you, Mr. Matthias, to give me, because as I go along the road every day, I heard different views from different people and uh, I know that they have a lot of unbelieving Thomas. <laughs> and Thursday I was coming from land and I listened to a radio. And the person was saying that, okay, this airport cannot finish in 2013. Because when they look at Fort Hill, the amount of work are there to be done, it cannot be done. But I drive to the airport every day. And I really, um, uh, I have to explain to so many people like I'm working with the airport authority. <laughs> and I want you to explain whether 50%, 80%, or 100% that this airport will finish in 2013. <laughs> and the other thing, all the people around the community, around the airport facility, who have lands. I know it has scrupulous people will want to come in and maybe offer them maybe a little thing more. And what are you saying to the, the people towards that? That is my two questions. In any event, you can always find a, a value to guide you on what is a good price for the land. But nobody can take the land from you until you get what you want for it. And don't forget, lands in this community now. That's why it's being high demand. So you are in a good position to negotiate a good price. You can't get it from here until they give you what you want. That's the first one. The second one is about um, the completion date of the airport project. Now, if this didn't come up tonight, I would be very uncomfortable going home because I'm sure it will have to come up at some stage. We've been working on the airport project since 2005. But physical work started on August 2008. And you're asking me about percentages, so I'm going to give you percentages. So we started in 2008, August. And we are here now, let us say, in September, October 2012. So we are four years on in terms of other works. Up to this day, we have completed 80% of the earth works. If we say then, on average, we've completed 20% of the earth works in each year, on average. But one thing you should bear in mind though, is that in the first few years, we didn't have as many pieces of equipment as we have now. When we started, we started with 27 pieces of equipment. And for about a year, that is all that we had. Now we have 72 pieces of equipment on site for moving equipment. So clearly we can do twice as much as we did in the first year. 
But here are Christians. Can we get that done by September next year? Surely. In fact, the rocky area that we are working on is just outside of the area that we need to pave. So we can start paving the runway even at the end of that first kilometer. And that rock will not affect us much because where we are blasting, of course we wouldn't pave and it's the blasting, but I'm saying to you that the rocky area is just outside of what we call the trench hole of the runway. Or the runway starts just after the rocky area. But we still have to bring that down because it is part of what we call the end zone or the safety end of the runway. And we are going to be creating, in fact, a breakwater of some sort into the sea and we are going to put our approach lighting system so that some of those rocks are going to find their way soon enough into Stop Spain. And in the process of doing that, we are going to create a very nice calm bay. This is how we prioritize um, Stop Spain. We are going to create a nice calm um, bay at Stop Spain, which can become something of a um, an area for people who are interested in the marina or something, but certainly for a nice um, calm bathing or in Stop Spain. Um, the terminal building, as I assured you, is on target to be completed sometime next year, September. OECC has a good record of getting the projects done on time and within budget. And they are on track. So that we are not concerned at all about whether that could be finished by next year, September. I doubt anyone who's seen what they've done since it started last year, August, would, con would be concerned about whether they can finish it by next year, September. The is on My question comes on the heel of what um, Brown would have mentioned earlier and the fact that he put something right on Mr. Matthias' um, lap. The fact that um, we want to try and prioritize stubs and the surrounding areas in terms of business development and any investments that can be brought on stream, hopefully before the uh, airport open so that we can get in on the ground floor. My question really is, um, are there any incentives from government in terms of helping people? Because we are a grassroots community and this is a rural area and people don't have the financial um, uh, assistance that we would like, but we have tons of ideas and we would like to do things, hopefully um, things that can be parlayed into bigger businesses when the airport does come on stream. What can we expect from government in terms of assistance and not just financial assistance hopefully if we get loans and that sort of stuff competitive interest rates um, so that we can see our business grow and not have to fight to pay back um, yeah grants would be nice lovely absolutely can we expect any of those at any point in time and um, you know for, for those of us who would like to do something and contribute to our community I can't say to you that um Government incentives in terms of grants and so on. <laughs> but I can, I can say to you that um, in terms of hotel development and how this could be in your own, if you're going to build a building with, with five or more bedrooms, um, there's incentives for that in terms of that. Um, you could build a, a building with, with five or six bedrooms and so on and, and use as an apartment um, and so on and you get incentives for, for that kind of stuff. You get incentives for the, the equipment that you're going to furnish it with, your, your fridge, your stove, your microwaves, televisions, beds and, and so on. All of those things in terms of an uh, apartment. Um, there's also incentives in terms of if you're operating a tour bus, um, you get incentives in terms of those things. Um, there's, I think it's 75 percent um, waiver of um, duty in relation to, to things of that nature. Um, and the Hotel Incentive Act provides for you to get these things um, every five years. So once you have an apartment or you, you can you keep your stuff for five years and then you want to replenish, you get new stuff, you, you, you just go back and apply for the new concession and so on. So those are some of the basic um, concessions that, that can be granted to you in the meantime in, in, in terms of those. But um, smaller things, um, if, you, if you're bringing in the, um, 
things to say in, in terms of the tourism industry and so on. There are also certain incentives that you can get from the Ministry of Finance in relation to those things as well. And um, persons in the industry who, who want to do something, as, as Hanabish mentioned, in terms of packaging and so on, um, there are incentives for, for those kinds of industries as well. For more information about the construction of the Argyle International Airport, log on to www.svgiadc.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Friends of the Argyle International Airport. We are also on YouTube at IADC SVG.